In this video, we are going to calculate the volume of a cone, cylinder, rectangular prism, and sphere. Before we do any calculations, we need to look at the definition of volume. So let's take a look. So what is volume? Volume is the amount of space that an object occupies. In the three-dimensional figures below, we can see that volume is all of the space inside of the figures. Now, I don't do a good job covering all of volume because you can see a lot of the white. However, you can get an, an idea that volume is all of the space inside. Also, volume is measured in cubic units. So what that means is if your measurement is in feet, then volume is in cubic feet. And how we write that is feet to the third power. You will also see inches. And in volume, it becomes cubic inches. And we also can see centimeters. And centimeters would become cubic centimeters. OK, so let's take a look at our very first object. So what is a cone? A cone has a circular base and a singular vertex. So if you look at the picture, you can see that the base is circular. I also have a curved surface that comes up to one point, and that point is called the vertex. Now the volume of a cone is one third times pi times the radius squared times the height. So if I come over here to my picture, you can see right here is the radius. So I'm gonna label that R. Also, you can see that the height of my cone is H. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some practice problems. Here I'm going to calculate the volume of a cone. My first practice problem, I can see that the radius is eight feet, and I am also given that the height is 24 feet. I am going to plug that into the formula to calculate the volume of this cone. So the volume equals one third times pi times the radius, and I'm going to put parentheses eight feet squared times 24 feet. It's important that you put parentheses anytime you have a power so that you know that you are not only taking the number to a power, but also the measurements. So we will see that when I simplify this. So volume equals one third times pi. What I was just talking about, eight feet times eight feet. Well, eight times eight is 64. Feet times feet will give me feet to the second power. Bring down my times 24 feet. Okay, I'm gonna further simplify. So I get volume equals one third times pi times 64 times 24. I'm gonna get a calculator and I'm going to do 64 times 24. I get 1,536, so I'm gonna write 1,536 feet to the third power. I know this because feet squared times feet will give me feet to the third power. All right, I'm, I'm going to continue to simplify. So volume equals one third times 1,536. I can take this because this is considered in the numerator since there's an invisible one underneath it. I'm gonna multiply it by one, by the other numerator. But I know when I multiply it by one, I'm just gonna get 1,536. I'm gonna divide it by the denominator. So I'm gonna get a calculator. I'm gonna do 1,536 times one again, which is itself, divide it by three. I get 512, so I'm gonna write 512, bring down the pi, and I cannot forget my units, feet to the third power, which again is cubic feet. Now this would be my answer if I was asked to give exact, because pi, we wanna leave it, so that would be exact, but if I'm asked to give decimal form, then I need to continue. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm gonna do, this is approximation. Okay, so I'm gonna take my calculator. 
I'm going to do 512 times pi. Now, I'm going to put times pi, and I'm using the whole exact pi. If you only use 3.14, you're going to have a slightly different answer. So please make sure to ask your teacher what he or she wants you to use, if you're going to use the exact pi or approximate to 3.14. Okay, so again, I'm multiplying it by 512. I get 1,608.5. I'm going to round to the nearest tenths. So 1,608.5. Can't forget my units, cubic feet. Okay, that would be my answer if I was asked for decimal form. Now, I just want to show you if I would have used rounded 3.14, I want to show you how it's off just a slight bit. So if you're wondering why you didn't get the exact same answer and you used 3.14, you can see that it's off a little bit. So 1,607.7, okay? So let's look at our next practice problem. Here, I can see that the diameter is 12 centimeters. However, for the formula, I need to use a radius. So what I need to do is take half of the diameter. I know that half of the diameter is half of 12, which is six. So this becomes six centimeters for the radius. So I'm gonna put R equals six centimeters. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in. I'm gonna put V equals one third times pi times my radius. My radius is six centimeters squared times my height. My height is 20 centimeters. All right, I'm going to simplify. So volume equals one third times pi times six centimeters times six centimeters will give me 36 centimeters squared times 20 centimeters. Okay, I'm gonna further simplify. Bring down one third times pi times, I'm gonna use my calculator, go back to it. I'm going to do 36 times 20. I get 720, can't forget my units, centimeters cubed, okay? I'm going to go ahead and multiply 720 times one and then divide by three, just like you saw I did earlier. So 720 times one, I know is 720. I'm gonna divide it by the denominator and I get 240. So I'm gonna put volume equals 240, bring down pi and bring down the centimeters cubed. So cubic centimeters. Again, this would be my answer if I was asked for exact, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the decimal. So approximately take 240, multiply it by pi, and I get 753.98 actually rounds it up. So it, it will become 754.0. So 754.0 cubic centimeters. Okay, so that's how you calculate the volume of a cone. Let's go ahead and take a look at another three-dimensional object. All right, so this three-dimensional object is a cylinder. So what is a cylinder? A cylinder has two circular bases connected by a curved surface. So if you look right here, the base is circular, and I also have the face is, another part of the base is circular as well. So, and it's connected by a curved surface. Now, if I look at the volume of a cylinder, I can see that I have pi times the radius squared times the height. Now, again, we know pi is 3.14 approximately. Okay, that's if you round it. Also, we know that the radius is right here, which goes from the center of the circle to a point on the, on the circle. Okay, and that is the radius, so I'm gonna label it R. And the height, we know the height is right here of the cylinder. Okay, so let's look at some practice problems. 
Okay, so we are going to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Our first practice problem, I can see that I'm given a radius of 5 feet, and I'm also given a height of 18 feet. So let's go ahead and plug that into our formula. So I get volume equals pi times r squared. r is 5 feet. Don't forget to put it in parentheses and square it, times my height. My height is 18 feet. Okay, I'm going to simplify volume equals pi times 5 feet squared. 5 times 5 is 25. Feet times feet will give me feet squared. Bring down my height, so times 18 feet. Further simplify, I'm going to write pi times 25 times 18. So I'm going to get my calculator again. I'm going to do 25, oops, sorry, 25 times 18. I end up getting 450. So this is 450. Feet squared times feet will give me feet to the third power, cubic feet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this because you normally see the constant in front and then you see pi behind it. So 450 pi, and then my units are cubic feet. If I was asked for exact, that would be my answer. But again, I'm going to continue and I'm going to give the approximation of the decimal. Oops. Okay, and so I'm gonna do 450 times pi, and I ended up getting 1,413.7. So 1,413.7 cubic feet. Okay, so let's take a look at the second practice problem. I can see here that I have a cylinder that is turned to the side. I can see that I have a diameter of 8 inches and a height of 17 inches. Now, in order to plug into the formula, I need to know the radius. So I know that I can take the diameter and I can divide it by 2 to get the radius. So this will give me a radius of 4 inches. Okay, I can take that. So here's the radius and I can plug that in to the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and write V equals pi times the radius and i'm going to open parentheses my radius is four inches squared times the height the height is 17 inches okay i'm going to simplify pi times four times four will give me 16 inches times inches is going to give me square inches times 17 inches i'm going to simplify by multiplying 16 times 17. So I'm going to get my calculator. I'm going to do 16 times 17. I get 272. So I'm going to write 272. Bring down pi and bring down my measurements, which is cubic inches. Because again, square inches times inches will give me my cubic inches. Okay, this would be exact. I'm going to go ahead and approximate the decimal. So I'm going to take 272, multiply it by pi, and I get 854.5. So I'm going to write 854.5, again, cubic inches. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another three-dimensional object. So what is a rectangular prism? A rectangular prism has six rectangular faces where all opposite faces are equal. So you can see I have a rectangular base right here for my rectangular prism and opposite faces all the way across here, and these are equal. All right. I also wanted to show you a cube here. My cube has a square as a base opposite has the same, it's equal, it's also a square. Now, in a cube, I have six squares, okay? It's different than the rectangular prism, but a cube is still a rectangular prism. 
So we're going to look at the formulas for that. So first, a rectangular prism is length times width times height. So if I come over here and label it, I have length, that's my L, I have my width, and I have my height. My height is all up and down right there, okay? Now if I look at a cube, a cube is just like a rectangular prism because I'm taking the length, the width, and the height and multiplying it. But this side right here is the same as this side and this side. In other words, it's S times S times S. Well, I can write that the volume equals S to the third power. Now, if you forget this formula, that's okay because you can still use the formula of a rectangular prism because a cube is a rectangular prism. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so let's work on practice problem number one we can see that we have a rectangular prism that has a length of 10 feet, we have a width of four feet, and a height of 25 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the formula. So the formula is volume equals length, again, my length is 10 feet, times my width, my width is four feet, times my height, my height is 25 feet. Okay, all I need to do is multiply those three numbers together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator. I'm going to multiply 10 times 4, I already know is 40. And I'm going to multiply that by 25. I get 1,000. So the volume is equal to 1,000 feet times feet times feet is going to give me feet to the third power, which is also cubic feet. And I'm already done because I don't have pi. I don't need to think about decimal form and exact or so on because this is exact. So the volume equals 1,000 cubic feet. So let's look at practice problem number two. I can see that I have a cube because my length is eight centimeters, my width is eight centimeters, and my height is eight centimeters. Since all three are the same, I have a cube. Now, I can use the formula for a rectangular prism, or I can also apply the cube formula, which is side cubed. Okay, so I take the side and I multiply it by itself three times. Again, I can use length times width times height because they're all the same, so it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to plug in eight centimeters cubed. This becomes 8 times 8 times 8. So I'm going to grab my calculator and I can put 8 times 8 times 8 or I can put 8 to the third power and I get 512. So I'm going to write 512 cubic centimeters. And that's my answer. I don't have to worry about pi. There's no pi in this. So that's my exact answer. So let's look at our last three-dimensional object. What is a sphere? A sphere is perfectly round where any point on the surface has the same distance from the center. So as I said, it's perfectly round. So you can see right here that it is perfectly round. Also, any point in the center has the same distance to any point on the surface. So I can draw all these points right here on the surface and they all have the same distance to the center of the sphere. And that is called the radius. So you can see also right here, this dotted line right here, this is the radius, okay? So any of those lines is the radius. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems. All right, so volume of a sphere. For the first practice problem, I'm given that the radius is nine feet. So I'm gonna plug that in. So I get volume equals four thirds times pi times my radius is nine feet. I gotta make sure that I do not forget the cube, okay? So the volume equals 4 thirds times pi times 
nine feet cubed. So that's nine times nine times nine. Again, I can do nine to the third power and I get 729. Cannot forget cubic feet. Okay, feet times feet times feet is cubic feet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and simplify it. It's easy for me just to use my calculator to take 729, which is the numerator, multiply it by the other numerator, which is four, and then divide by three. So again, I'm taking 729, multiplying it by four, and I get 2,916, and I'm gonna divide it by the denominator, which is three. So divide by three, I ended up getting 972. Now, sometimes I'm not going to get a whole number. In this case, I did. The next problem you're gonna see where we don't get a whole number, okay? But that'll be okay, because we'll know how to work with it. Okay, so I got 972 pi, can't forget that, and cubic feet. Okay, so if I was asked for exact, that would be my exact answer. Now I'm going to show you decimal form. So approximation. I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to multiply it by pi. I get 3,053.6, okay? So 3,053.6. Cubic feet. And that would be my answer. Okay, so let's look at the second practice problem. Here I can see that I have 16 inches as the diameter. So what I need is the radius. And as you saw earlier, I can take the diameter, I can divide it by two. So that will give me a radius of eight inches. Okay, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna plug that into the volume formula for a sphere. So volume equals four thirds times pi times the radius, and the radius again is eight inches to the third power. Okay, so volume equals four thirds times pi times eight to the third power. We did do that one earlier, but again, eight to the third power is 512. So I'm gonna write 512 cubic inches because inches to the third power right here is inches times inches times inches, which will give me cubic inches, okay? I'm gonna simplify by taking 512, which is my numerator. Remember, there's an invisible one underneath here, so this is a numerator. I'm gonna multiply it by four and then divide by three. So I'm gonna grab my calculator, take 512 times four, I get 2,048, if I divide it by three, I actually don't get a whole number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it as a fraction. So I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna go back to 512, multiply it by four, and I'm gonna keep that as my numerator. So my numerator is 2048. So I'm gonna write 2048 divided by three. I'm gonna bring down my pi, and I'm gonna bring down my cubic inches, okay? You can also write pi in the numerator up here because it is part of the numerator, or you can write it to the side over here, okay? So if I was asked for exact, this would be my answer. I'm gonna go ahead and give the decimal form also. So I'm gonna approximate. So I'm gonna take my calculator. I'm gonna divide 2048 by three, hit equals, I'm gonna keep that whole entire number and I'm gonna multiply it by pi. So times pi, and I'm gonna hit equals. So I get 2,144.7, because I'm going to round that. So 2,144.7, and I'm gonna bring down my cubic inches. If you want more practice, please go to www.exploremathindemand.com. Under the student access tab, you will find free math videos and online quizzes. Please don't forget to follow my YouTube for more videos. Thank you so much. Bye.